listen for God's word to God's people. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again, we come out of the busyness of our lives to stand in front of your open word, seeking words that are steadfast and true. Speak, we pray. If you read my note in the newsletter this past Thursday, you will have gotten a slight glimpse at where we're headed over the next month together in worship. Beginning this week and moving to the end of the month, we're going to spend time on a sermon series I'm calling Three Hours to a Deeper Faith. Now maybe this will become a best-selling Christian life book. But I kind of hope not. <laughs> what I want to spend our time as we enter into a new season of life for September, school has started, we're getting back into the swing of things, and it feels like a new chapter for a lot of us in life. And I want to, to mark this transitional period with some thoughts on how we might grow together as a community of faith to look at ways that we can be intentional about growing deeper in our faith. Things that we can do in areas we might focus on. And so over the last months I've been thinking, okay, well how do we do that? What are the things that I would want people to be encouraged to strive after? And I came down to three things. Three is a good number for church things, especially at a place called Trinity. <laughs> and so today is uh, what my public speaking teachers would call the introduction. In fact, my notes say, three hours to a deeper faith, dot, dot, the introduction. <laughs> I don't really get very fancy with the things that I do. So today I want to just give you a glimpse of where we're going over the next month and lay some, uh, some theological, theoretical groundwork for our conversations over the next month. So the first question is, why go deeper in our faith at all? Isn't it enough to just believe? Well, my question would be, what is enough? Why do we come to church? Why are we part of this faith community? There are some that would say that the purpose of church is to make sure that you go to heaven, to make sure that your salvation is secure, and that that is our ultimate goal. And maybe, for some of us, that is something that we are focused on. But the theology of Presbyterians, you know, the, the joke goes, at least, when I was a kid, I bet some of you have heard it too. Someone says, well, when were you saved? And the Presbyterian answer is 2,000 years ago at the cross. That it is not, salvation is not dependent on our ongoing actions. Works do not lead to salvation. A perfect attendance at church does not lead to salvation, although it makes pastors happy. <laughs> we don't 
do things around our faith to please a God that is so fickle to need our constant admiration. The things we'll be talking about this month are not a checklist for going to heaven. So if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be disappointed. And I'm sorry. What they are about is living an abundant life. Our calling as Christians is to live in a world that doesn't know the abundance of God so often, that seeks abundance in other ways, in ways that are often destructive and short-sighted. Our calling is to live a different way, with a different focus. And my hope is that this can be one way for us to approach that. So with that lead in, what are the three things? Thing one is worship. Pretty obvious, hopefully. We worship. Thing two is study. And thing three is service. So let's take each of those in turn. Why do we worship? Probably we have lovely music. Maybe you come for the music. I like the fellowship that we have here. It's fun to come and see all of you on a Sunday morning. But I don't think that is why we worship. We worship because, as one theologian says, thanks to a book that Elgin so kindly gave me in my first weeks here, we are what we love. Or more appropriately, we are what we worship. And in our modern society, there are many things we are asked to worship. We worship wealth and power and technology and beauty, and all of those things can guide our hearts. The more we worship something, the more we desire something, the more our hearts are attuned like a compass going out of alignment to draw us more and more to those things. By coming to worship every week, we retrain our hearts. We realign ourselves to what it means to live as one of God's created children. Worship trains our hearts. And so if we want to grow deeper, we worship. So how about study? If we want to understand our faith, again, understanding our faith is not a prerequisite for being a Christian. You, there's no test of how much of the Bible you need to know in order to be baptized. Thank goodness, or else all those little babies would have a really hard time. <laughs> <coughs> I apologize for my cough. I'm trying not to do it right into the microphone. Um, from at least the Middle Ages, theologians have talked about a concept of faith-seeking understanding. And the order of that is deeply important. We don't have understanding so that we can have faith. But because we have faith, because God has given us the grace of faith and belief, we continue to seek understanding. We want to know more about God. We want to know more about our faith. It's just like when you meet someone new, or uh, maybe I'm the only one that does this, I don't think so, but when I meet someone new, I want to know all about them. I want to know their story. And the, law is, the more I learn, the more I want to know. Because people are interesting. And it should be the same way with our faith. Once we get to know that first inkling of God, we should want to dive in and learn more and more. Finally, service. As I said earlier, we don't do good works. We don't do nice things because it is some mechanism of making God happy. It is not like the service hours of the National Honor Society for our high school kids. God doesn't say you must do 67 hours of good things every year or else. Right? You don't have to log in somewhere and track your hours. That's not how God works. We don't 
do good things to receive grace. We do good things because we have received grace already. God has shown us abundant and overwhelming love through Jesus. And because of that, we are encouraged and empowered to serve those around us, to serve each other, to serve our broader community, to serve the world at large. We do that service out of a desire to reflect the grace that has been given us already. So you might be asking, so there are three things, and there are probably, and hopefully you think there are three okay things. You're not thinking, well, worship, that's fine. Study, I don't know, service, no way. Hopefully that's not your reaction as I list out these items. But you might be wondering, where does the three hours come into it? And so here's my pitch. This is based largely on a reckoning of mine. I think it's true. And I hope that over this month as we engage with it together, you might come to think that it's true also. I think that if each of us were to devote three hours a week to our faith, an hour in worship, an hour in study, and an hour in service, that we would find our faith grow in exponential ways. That we would grow deeper in our understanding and appreciation of our faith. That we will build relationships with those in this congregation, in this faith community, but with those around us as well. That as we engage three hours a week, our faith will grow and blossom. Now, some of you may be thinking, you know, I signed up for an hour of worship, maybe 65 minutes on a communion Sunday. I don't know that I've got two more to give. Some of you might be saying, three hours, that's all I have to do? <laughs> Great! <laughs> I can back way off. That's all we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> No one gets a pass out of the next committee meeting because Pastor Chris said it's three hours a week and that's, that's it. <laughs> because we're not tracking these, remember? <laughs> this is an individual journey and an individual encouragement because we do this life together as a community, but we're a community of individuals. And each of us as we go through this, I'm really hoping you're going to find at least one place where you think, you know, maybe I could try something new there. Maybe for some of you, it is saying, okay, I've not done Sunday school since I was however high, and maybe this is the month I give it a shot. Maybe I come to one of our adult Sunday schools starting next week. Maybe I go down to the Trinity room to the lectionary class. Maybe I go downstairs to the fellowship hall for topical discussions or down to the room whose number I can never remember that has the blue streamers and join our salt class and spend some time each week in fellowship and study. Maybe you come on a Wednesday night to join Pastor Jane at 4, me at 6.15 and dive into study. Maybe this month or next is the time you say, you know, I could find an hour even once a month to go help across the lines. Or I could devote an hour to help clean up or set up for something. There's no answer that fits everybody. What it works for one person is not going to work for the other. That's why it's a journey we each go on. But I believe deeply that if we each think about these three areas, worship, study, and service, that we are going to find a deeper, richer faith. So that's where we're headed this month. I'm excited. I hope you're at least just the tiniest bit excited to come along with me. So we ask a blessing on our journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.